In the last video of the BFM series, we took a look at how to put yourself on the tail of an unaware target and how to practice using the butterfly setup. But what about when you come across a bandit that's aware of your presence and wants to fight? That bandit is going to turn in an attempt to gain an offensive position. The direction the bandit chooses to turn will determine the course of the fight. If the bandit turns toward you, then you'll see a pattern where each of you is chasing the other aircraft's tail. This nose-to-tail chase scenario will create a ground track that looks like two circles, which is where the name two-circle fight comes from. But if you ever have trouble figuring out if it's a two-circle fight, just remember that if it's nose-to-tail, then it's a two-circle engagement. Now what about when the bandit turns away from you? When that happens, everything changes. Both aircraft are now circling around to meet in a second nose-to-nose -nose pass. The ground track ends up looking like this, and as you've probably guessed, it's called a one-circle fight. You can always recognize it by the nose-to-nose -nose profile. There's an important factor to consider with these two patterns. The last jet to turn decides if this will be a one- or two-circle fight. This means that if you want to guarantee a two-circle fight, you have to forfeit the benefits of a lead turn. So you need to choose if you want to decide the fight's direction or make a lead turn. You can't have both. The lead turn gives you a tremendous advantage over a bandit that turns late. So don't give that away for free. Now let's go over what you should do if the bandit turns toward you after the lead turn. When you enter a two-circle turning engagement, you'll probably see something like this. The bandit is going to build range quickly, and there will be a lot of aft LOS movement on the canopy. But as long as you stick to your best sustained turn, you'll eventually see that movement come back to the front. If you follow the urge to go into a lead or pure pursuit by pulling the bandit into the gun sight, then you'll see the following happen. Range will close and aspect will increase until you're looking at the top of the bandit like this. This bandit is at or near 90 degrees of aspect. Then we'll see the bandit drift back on our canopy and range will build up again. This is just like when we started the engagement, and if you go into lead or pure pursuit again, we'll repeat the process. The bandit will just keep yo-yoing like this indefinitely. So let's talk about why this is happening and how we can overcome it. When we start our lead turn, we're entering a turn circle that's not quite aligned with the bandit's turn circle. The bandit will be in the forward half of our canopy at this point. When the bandit is at 90 degrees into that first turn, we'll be a little farther ahead of the 90 degree mark on our circle because of the lead turn. But even then, we can still see the bandit is now behind our lift vector and in the back half of our view. This happens right around the time we cross the bandit's turn circle here. When the bandit reaches 180 in the turn, we would be right around here and now the bandit is in the forward half of our canopy again. The bandit is now drifting forward and giving us winning cues. This will continue until somewhere around here, where we see the bandit is back in the rear half of the canopy again. Also, whenever we're in this region inside the bandit's turn circle, we'll be closer than when we're outside the circle. This is another reason for the yo-yoing effect. Even with a performance advantage, this back and forth can go on for a while before you finally get to the bandit's control zone. Just like in offensive BFM, we want to align those turn circles before moving in for the kill. The way we do that is with the turn circle extension, or TCX for short. When we say turn circle extension, what we really mean is easing out of the turn to move the center of our turn circle someplace else. So if we flew in a straight line here for a few seconds before going back into a turn, we would move our turn circle in this direction. That's exactly what we want to do, and it's as easy as it sounds. A TCX is just 2-3 to three seconds of easing off the G. It isn't necessarily a straight line, but it can be. But we have to be careful with where we start the TCX. If you start it here, then your turn circles won't get any closer. Yours will just end up off to the side. And if you start your TCX here, then both circles will end up farther apart. That TCX needs to happen here to get you where you want to be. The Air Force uses this diagram to describe what the right TCX cues look like. If you see the bandit slide into this region with aspect in the 45 to 60 degree range, then that would be one of your cues to extend. This is also the assessment window we covered in Offensive BFM, which is about one to two fifths above the canopy bow. 
And just like an offensive BFM, if the bandit's aspect is above our desired 30 degrees, then we want to ease back on the G. That's essentially what a TCX is, and it's what we would do here too. We also have this other cue to extend here. Now this might look like a beer bottle, but it's actually a bottle of Jeremiah Weed Bourbon, which is a lot larger than a beer bottle. Every USAF fighter pilot knows exactly how big one of these is, but I know not everyone does. For my enlisted viewers, think of it as a stack of two energy drink cans. If you still have trouble visualizing it, then think of this as just above the assessment window. These cues go up to 90 degrees AA. If the bandit is above that, it means he's coming towards you and your high aspect. When that happens, we go into a lead turn, just like before. Getting it right takes a lot of practice, and even with experience, you shouldn't expect to get lined up with just one TCX. The manual says time required can vary from 500 degrees of fighting to over 1,000. That's about three times around the circle. If you do everything right, you'll eventually see range and aspect look like what we covered in offensive BFM. At that point, you'll just transition to OBFM. Now let's go over how you can practice this using the butterfly setup. We went over how to do a butterfly setup in this video. So check that out for all the details. We use that same setup with one exception. This time the bandit is going to maneuver. Just like in real life training, we won't have the bandit start to maneuver until the fighter has passed the bandit's 3-9 line. This lets the fighter practice the lead turn and also lets the bandit make this into a two-circle fight. Remember, the last one a turn decides the fight geometry. Use the energy atom to get a sustained rate turn speed between 380 and 420 knots during your lead turn. Once at the 3-9 line, the bandit will turn toward the fighter to start the two-circle fight. I recommend limiting the bandit to male power at first so the fight doesn't drag out. You can always remove that limit later. The objective here is to get the fighter to get a good weapon solution in three trips around the circle. Now there's one particular problem in BFM we haven't covered so far, and that's what to do when you lose tally on the bandit. In a nose to tail fight, we actually have a method for finding the bandit. When you lose sight of the bandit, you end up in one of two scenarios. One where you don't see the bandit, but the bandit sees you, and another where both of you have lost sight, like when someone flies into a cloud. That second scenario isn't too bad, but the first one can be lethal because the bandit is still maneuvering on you. There are two things you need to do in this scenario. First is to keep turning. Don't fly straight and level while you search for the bandit. That's just making his job easier. Second is look at where the bandit wants to be, which is in the high PK WES as shown here. That WES is a big cone, but when you're in a turn, it's just a slice of that cone which is another reason why you want to stay in a turn. Once you're sure that the wes is clear, zigzag your view up through your turn circle. The bandit is going to be somewhere along that path if he's still after you. When you first start this exercise, you probably won't have trouble keeping tally, but as restrictions get lifted on the bandit, you just might lose him. These tips should help you find him again. Now let's do a quick recap. The direction of the fight is determined by the last aircraft to turn. When the bandit turns towards you, you end up in a two-circle pattern. Conversely, turning away from you will initiate a one-circle pattern. In a two-circle fight, while flying your best sustained rate turn, you might come across a situation where your turn circle isn't quite aligned with the bandit's turn circle. This could produce a yo-yoing effect as the bandit moves up and down your canopy. The best way to solve this, and some other BFM problems, is with the turn circle extension. A TCX is just easing off the G for 2-3 to three seconds. Once you see aft LOS develop, reapply the G back to the sustained rate turn. You'll probably need more than one TCX to get it right, but eventually you'll end up in a place where you can transition to OBFM. In the next video in this series, we'll cover what to do when the bandit turns away from you. That's a one-circle engagement, and the dynamics change quite a bit. There's also a chance it can turn into a two-circle fight, but now you'll know what to do if that happens. So keep an eye out for the next video, and thanks for watching.